This is a, a child who has uh, multiple hyperpigmented uh, papules on their trunk and they're very itchy. And uh, so the dermatologist did a biopsy here and there's a little keratin granuloma down here from a ruptured follicle, but that's incidental. But what we're most interested in is that the dermis here is not normal. It's filled with some type of cell. So we gotta go closer to see what kind of cells these are. And they're kind of a oval to spindle shaped cells and they're mixed in with a lot of pink collagen. And you can see that they're totally uh, within the dermis. They do not involve the epidermis at all. And in, mixed in between these kind of oval to spindled cells, see here's these kind of oval to spindle cells. And then there's also a bunch of um, bright pink or orange eosinophils scattered in there. All right. So whenever we see an infiltrate in the dermis and then eosinophils and it's a child, we always think about Langerhans cell histiocytosis. That's one thing. The one difference is that Langerhans histiocytosis usually is gonna involve the epidermis. It's gonna get up into the epidermis because Langerhans cells normally live in the epidermis. They're, they're built to get into the epidermis. Um, but this infiltrate is full, filling up the dermis and not involving the epidermis. And then when you look closer at the cytoplasm of the cells, what you can see is they have a very finely granular uh, texture to them. It can be a little hard to appreciate on video, but let's see if we can get it to show up. See, they have this kind of slightly bluish um, cytoplasm that is falling apart there and has kind of a granular nature to it. So I think when I see cells like that, I always think about mast cells. They have these bluish, bluish granules in their cytoplasm. So mastocytosis is also something that can occur in children and can uh, make multiple itchy papules like we just described. And so what we did is some stains to make sure so the one stain that you can do for mast cells is a CD117 or C-Kit. Now, word of caution, C-Kit will stain mast cells beautifully, but it's not specific. It will stain a lot of things. Melanocytes and lots of other things can be positive for C-Kit. And here's a, here's a beautiful example. There's strong, diffuse staining of all of these mast cells in the dermis. Beautiful. Very nice. You can also use mast cell tryptase, which is a little bit more specific. So that, that works pretty well too. Or you can even use a Geme sustain, which will highlight them. But wait, what about these uh, CK7 positive cells up here in the epidermis? I, we said that there were no cells in the epidermis. See, these are background melanocytes, normal melanocytes um, that are in the background of the skin. So again, remember that normal melanocytes and a lot of melanocytic lesions will express CD117. So you gotta be careful. But here we have diffuse, strong staining of the dermal cells for CD117. And we also did a CD1A and an S100 protein, which are stains for uh, Langerhans cells. And you can see, sorry, the section's upside down. The, these uh, cells in the middle of the epidermis, those are actually Langerhans cells there. And then the ones along the base of the epidermis, those are melanocytes. So those both express S100. So we've got a nice, normal, positive internal control. But the dermal cells are almost completely devoid of S100 staining, with the exception of scattered cells here and there. And those also represent Langerhans uh, and other dendritic cells uh, in the background. But this is, it's totally normal to have a little scattered staining in the dermis for almost anything, actually. Um, and, but the rest of the infiltrate, all those cells that were C-kit positive, um, are negative on S100. Or I'm sorry, on, on the, that, excuse me, that was, uh, that was actually CD1A. So I miss, oh no, it was S100. And then here we have, uh, here we have CD1A. Uh, and that, you can see beautifully, those, that basal layer of, um, basal layer um, melanocytes, the normal background melanocytes are not staining, but the, the mid-level cells in the epidermis, those are staining and those are the Langerhans cells. So S100 will stain Langerhans cells, but also melanocytes and some other things, whereas CD1A pretty much only stains Langerhans cells um, in the skin. That's about the only thing that it stains, both normal and um, neoplastic uh, Langerhans cells. So this is a real nice example of uh, cutaneous mastocytosis and the form that uh, this child had with the kind of uh, itchy hyperpigmented um, papules and nodules, that's called urticaria pigmentosa, which is kind of a confusing name because it microscopically doesn't look anything like urticaria. But in any case, that's, um, that's a nice example of that. And the, I usually let the um, dermatologist make the, the clinical distinction between the different subtypes of mastocytosis.